So okay, so today we're going to look at waves. Uh, we're going to look at all the past equations that came out before. And we're going to attempt to answer this question. As we are attempting, you will learn this chapter. So number one, as you all can see here, this is known as, what kind of wave is this, Anusha? Okay, so this graph is known as a longitudinal wave, or in Malay we call it as Glombang Bambujur. So what happens is, it, most of this kind of wave are usually for sound wave. The interesting thing about this wave atau Glombang ini adalah, dia boleh berga, dia hanya dia memerlukan medium. That means it needs a medium to move. We don't saw, we don't in, 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 um, in Malay we panggil pergerakan Glombang as merambat. Okay, so this wave literally needs a medium to propagate. Propagate means merambat, merambat means to move. We also have another type of wave that you guys are all familiar with, that you all will see everywhere, which is called this wave. This is called Grombang Melintang, or known as transverse wave. This one doesn't need a medium, guys? No. No, this one doesn't need a medium. So eventually this example, salah satu conto is light and light wave. Or Golomba Chahaya. So this one doesn't, but this guy needs. Because what is it compressing? It, it's compressing the medium. The part that you see here, the Mampatkan is the medium. And the part that the Regang also is Regang, it's Sedang Meregangkan, the medium. It doesn't have its own spring. Eh? It doesn't have its own spring in the molecule. Dia menggunakan the medium untuk to transfer the wave from this side to that side. So the part here label, it looks, it's called rarefaction or regangan, and J is known as compression or mampatan. So for the answer here, put tegang regangan or rarefaction. Next one, they say circle two part of the diagram that represents the wavelength. So there's many parts you can actually represent this. One of it is the wave must be added two parts. One is the part of regangan, another part of mampatan. So for... In English, we say this as it has one compression and one rarefaction. Yeah. Oh, Papa, ma, what, ma? Yes, sir, yes. Okay, ma. So, so this part is, you can see my pen. Okay. Hello, sir. Hi, hi, Rihan. Rihan, the call is being uh, recorded. So, let me know if you want to ask any, like, private question or something like that. Oh, sir. Oh, I'm sir. I said, buddy, good job, buddy. I'm still not at home, so my mind. Still not at home, ah. Where are you? Still in school, sir. Very good, buddy. Keep it up. Sir, don't worry, sir. I'm studying at math, sir. I do about eight kinematics. Sir, this is form four, sir. With yes, form four, chapter five, baby. Oh, okay. So nice. this part is so the wave. Let's say starts here, means the wave starts here. Then from one compression, or we call it mampatan, to another mampatan or compression. So from here up to here. So this one wavelength, or we call it as lambda. Or we can calculate from one rare fraction. Let me change color. So it also can be from here up to all the way to the next rare fraction. So this one lambda. Make sense? Well, this is one way. If I start, let's say, from the middle of one compression, I have to finish at the middle of another compression. Or if I start in the middle of one rare fraction, I have to go until one rare fraction. So each one of these is known as one wavelength. So what do you mean by one wavelength? Like transverse wave, when it goes up and down, right? So this is known as one wave, correct? Yes. Okay, ma. So from here to here is one wavelength, or it's from the tip, from this tip to this tip is one wavelength, or the from this katakan, let's say, if it's from here means you cut it once and the next part that touches. So this is known as one wavelength. Sally guys, draw the diagram please. One. So that means one wavelength is somewhere between you can say from J to K or you can say from L to M or L to N or M to O, so many of those. And they say give one example of wave demonstrated in diagram one. Anybody want to give me? Demonstrate as in what, sir? 
That means uh, what they mean by demonstrate ma means give one example. So one example is like sound wave, correct? Yes. Yeah. So the answer is sound wave, right there, gelombang bunyi. Okay, next one, guys. They say diagram four point one shows a boy jumping from a tree branch into a lake. The branch vibrates before it stops, correct? It goes up and down and up and down. We just state the phenomenon that occurs on the branch. The phenomena is black or dark. The hand is Branch is a diving board. Okay, branch is a diving board. Okay, I can agree with you on that, but that doesn't answer the question where. It says, you see, the branch does it vibrate forever? Or it stops after some time. It stops after some, some time. Very good, Anusha. Yeah, it stops after one some time. That means what the reason why it stops because the branch goes something called damping, upper and bottom. Where after some time the wave kind of like fades off and dies. So this is called damping of upper and bottom. Can okay, guys? Can sir. Next one. Apakah yang berlaku apabila amplitude getaran dahan itu? What does happen to the amplitude? Like from my drawing, right? Can you see the amplitude? Amplitude of wave is from here to here. So and then from here to here. So what happens to the A? Does it increase or decrease? Decrease. Yeah. So right there, the amplitude decreases. Amplitude berkurangan. Amplitude decreases or amplitude berkurangan. And then they give you two marks instead, instead of one mark. So you say, why does amplitude de decreases or amplitude berkurangan? Because the energy decreases because the naga berkurangan. The reason why the amplitude berkurangan or decreases because the energy also decreases. Bully guys. Bully sir. Very good mom. So this is the damping part. They sketch a graph of amplitude against time. So they give you this kind of empty graph. So you have to draw this one. Amplitude over time. So do I need to write the unit and everything like amplitude slash centimeter and time masses slash s? Yes. You have to write in full. Huh? So make sure you put a slash there, write the centimeter here and masses or time slash seconds. So if I write anything else, is it correct? No, it's wrong. Just like this one, huh? Next one. Apabila Buddha lelaki itu terjun ke dalam tasik, lompang air terhasil. When the boy jumps in the lake, a wave is produced. Diagram 4.3 shows the displacement against the time for the waves. So you see first it's 20 and then it will over time decrease up. But this is how the wave actually looks like. So the amplitude is 20. And let's see what are the first question. So now the question says, based on this, tentukan uh, amplitude. Determine the amplitude and the wavelength of this one. Can you guys find out what is the amplitude for this one? 20. Yes, the amplitude has to be 20 centimeter and the length of the wave. So length of one wave. So it starts here, it has to end here, correct? From the peak. To the peak or puncha ke puncha, how much is it? Totally 80, yeah, sir. Uh, let me show you one example. I'm going to paste it here. So remember, a wave, one wave is either you take from here to here, or you can take from the valley to the valley, lumbar to lumbar, or you can take from here, then you go through one, cut once, and the second part. So this is all known as wavelength. The panjang lobang or what is the length of the wave? So what is the length from here to here? How much? What you see? Yes, correct. So this is 40 centimeter. Sally guys. Okay, next question. The frequency of the wave is 5 hertz. Frequency glombang i ala lima hertz. So based on your answer in 4C1, calculate the speed of the water wave. The speed, there is a formula that you all have to obey 
which is a few, there's only like very limited amount of formulas in this chapter, which makes it much more easy to calculation. So the V is equals to F lambda. This is the velocity of the wave or Halaju Gulomba. This is the frequency of the wave. What is the meaning of frequency, Anusha? Frequency means bilangan pulangan dalam satu sign. Number of repetition, number of the same repetition in one second. Okay, number of repetition in one second, that is called frequency. So using this formula, V equals to F lambda, where they already give frequency. The frequency given is 5. So write the 5. The wavelength is now, we calculate how much, Subha? 40. Very good. So this is 40 centimeter, correct? Right? And yes. the frequency is in hertz, correct? Right? What does hertz mean? Frequency is actually equals to 1 over time, right? So so 1 over time is actually 1 over second. So the unit of frequency will be in S negative 1. Okay? So 5 times 40, how much, Anusha? 200, sir. Yes, very good. 200 centimeter per second. Correct, no, Rehan? Sir, now the question is, do I need to change this to meter? Do I need to? Yes, you have to. So if I change it to meter, what will happen? So 200 centimeter per second change to meter means I must divide by 100. So it becomes 2 meter per second. But most of the time in your exams, when it comes to only wave, your teacher will accept this. Okay, some teachers will accept, but I'll always ask you to be cautious. And if you have time, first you leave the answer like this. After that, when you read checking back the paper, that's when you write like this. Can okay, ladies and gentle boy? Can, sir. Very good, mom. Next question. So, the next question we're going to look at if the depth of the water increases, what happens to the wavelength of the water wave? So, uh, based on the formula, things I've taught you guys last time. So, you all have to understand a few concepts here. One of the concepts that you need to know is depth or kadalama. So, I'm going to show you an example. Let's say uh, this is a beach, okay? This part is the beach, and there is the sand going down deeper and deeper, and then in one part, there's like a elevated height of the soil under the sea, and then it goes up like this. Let's assume now, let's see. So I'm gonna just cut this blue. So let's say this is the water level. This is the water level. So now what's going to happen is, if there's a wave going to start, as the wave gets deeper and deeper, the wave also gets bigger and bigger. But as it comes to a nearby shallow or Kausan and Chiti, the wave becomes smaller again, and then we continue to become big and gradually become small because it is shallow. So always remember, if it's deep, Dalam, then the, what will happen to the waves? The wavelength will increase. Yes, correct. The wavelength will increase. We will follow this formula because V equals to F lambda. These waves have high velocity. If they have high velocity, if V is high, if V is high, F frequency will never change. Once a wave has already been created, the frequency will never ever change. Just like you guys. The moment you are born, the size of your eyeball when you are a baby until you die will always be the same. Your eyeball size will never ever change. Same like that, the frequency of a wave will always remain the same, constant. That means if the velocity increases because the wavelength is also increasing. So that means the wavelength, if, if the velocity here is high, that means the lambda also is high. At the shallow part, Chikasan Chete, V is low, so lambda also low. So here is the shallow part, so it means the wave velocity is low, then the lambda also will be low. Here it increases back because now it's deeper back again, so this part, the V will be high, so the lambda also will increase. Does it make sense, guys? Yes, sir. Very good, Very good. Yeah. Tell me, guys. So this question says, so if the depth of the water increases, what will happen to the wavelength? Will also, also increase. Yes, right, very good. So the keyword is increases per time. 
Bom. Okay, next part. Next question. This is called reflection. Why is it reflection? Because not going through that object, it is bouncing off. Raja Napoy Satu dan Napoy Dewa menunjukkan corak gelombang air dalam tangki ria dan frekuensi penggetar yang berbeza. So diagram 6.1, diagram 6.2 shows the pattern of water waves in a ripple tank with a vibrator of different frequency. So underline the correct answer to define the transverse wave. So this is known as transverse wave, different from longitudinal wave. This is gelombang per melinta atau membujur manusia. Uh, Mambujo. Balinta. Remember Mambujo was earlier? Sound oh, yeah, yeah. is Mambujo. Okay, just remember, sound, you can hear it using your ears. Your ears look like Bujo, correct? The bento of telinga anda macam Bujo, betul? So remember, okay. telinga means Mambujo. Telinga is for gelombang bunyi. Okay, gelombang bunyi. So next part, you see here, Uh, gelombang melintang ialah gelombang yang mana zarah-zarah medium bergetar pada arah perserenjang. It's always perpendicular. Perpendicular means, right, what's happening here is So this way, going up and down, up and down, but eventually, from, even though it looks like it's going up and it's going down, but at the end, it will move from left to right. So the movement from up and down and left and right is 90 degrees. That's why they say this is perpendicular or bersaranjang. This is what they mean, huh? Okay. Right, so next part. They say compare. Compare diagonal 6.1 and 6.8 in terms of angle of incident of the wave. Angle of incident. Sudu tuju gelombang tersebut. So, now the sudu tuju. How is it going to be? Will there be any changes? No. no, it's going to be the same because the angle of incident and the angle of reflection must be the same. So if you guys are like, so what do you mean? I'm going to draw this. Paste this. So this angle of Incident, this is your pseudo tuju, and this is the angle of reflection. This I, this R, incident, reflection. So, must be the same. So, the angle of I must equal the angle of R. And here, if you look, it's now, but now they're asking to compare 6.1 and 6.2. If you look at 6.1, it's 45. 6.2 also is 45. So is there any difference? They are both equal. So here you write that. They are both equal or summer. Next one, they ask you for the wavelength, right? Yes. All right. So can anybody tell me what is the wavelength? 6.1 wavelength is more than 6.2. 6.1 is more than 6.2. So if we look at the diagram here, the wavelength, that means from this, this is the peak. So that means from here to the here. So this is your wavelength, lambda 1. And uh, lambda 1. This is from this peak to this peak to this lambda 2. So from here we know lambda 1 is bigger than lambda 2. Okay, guys? And then we see the frequency here 30 hertz, here 50 hertz. So that means the frequency of 6.1 is smaller than 6.2, correct? So do I need to write the word diagram? Yes, 
I advise you to write the word diagram. Diagram 6.2 is smaller than diagram 6.2. A lot of students have complained to me because during trials, right, they don't write the word diagram and the teacher penalized them. So it's been a big headache. The next part, they say, relate the wavelength. Relate the wavelength and frequency of the waves. And the next question will be name the wave phenomenon involved. So this is definitely an easy one for you guys. So what can we say about frequency and wavelength? Remember the formula which I taught you just now? What is the one formula which I taught you just now, guys? Oh. Yes, sir. So, but ma? V equals to F lambda, I lambda. Think. So, what is the relationship between F and lambda now? Frequency and wavelength. Frequency remains the same even if wavelength increases. Uh, what is the one common we use, ma? What we do is, in order to know that, we bring the lambda that side, correct? So, what does it become? V over lambda is equals to F trend. Yes. So therefore we know V times with 1 over lambda is equals to F. So therefore 1 over lambda is directly proportional to frequency. So that means we say wavelength is inversely proportional to frequency. That means Panjang Gloma. Adalah berkadar somsam dengan frekuensi. Boleh? Yes, sir. Terima kasih. Anda siapa kan? Ya, boleh. Boleh. Okay, next part. Name the wave phenomenon involved. So what is the phenomenon of this? I said in the beginning of my looking at the question. Reflection. Yes, very good, Ma. Reflection. Antolana. Reflection. Antolana. What I'm going to do right now, this is the end of part one. Uh, I'm going to end the meeting now and restart it back uh, because the meeting is going to end. So I will see you in part two in a bit. Will you guys? So please join me. Welcome to part two of our session today on physics with Oglumba. So, berbalik kepada sambungan soalan E. So, this question menyatakan menunjukkan sebuah kapal menggunakan gelombang ultrasonic bagi menentukan kedalaman dasar laut. So, for this question, right, so usually we have a fixed formula for this question. Can anyone tell me what is the formula? Yeah, yes, okay. okay. Let's answer the first question first. They say, give one reason why ultrasonic wave is used. But again, satu sebab mengapa ga gelombang ultrasonic digunakan. Because gelombang ultrasonic mempunyai frekuensi yang tinggi. What is the frekuensi yang tinggi means? What, is, what does it mean to have high frequency? Now, let's see, you guys are not so sure. So you can look back at the same formula again. Uh, if we look back here. So V equals to F lambda, correct? If there's any way for you to increase your frequency, what will happen to the wavelength or the velocity of the wave, sorry? Decrease. No, if like 6 is equals to 2 times 3, right, Ma? Now if this 2 becomes 4, what does it become? What happens to 6? Oh, increase. Increase, correct. So that means this one also will increase. So therefore, frequency is related to energy, tenaga. Right? Frequency is related to energy or tenaga. The reason why in this question we are using ultrasonic because it has high frequency, mempunyai frequency yang tinggi, dan mempunyai frequency yang tinggi bermaksud mempunyai tenaga yang tinggi. It means it also has high energy. So please write it down. High frequency and high energy. 
high frequency and also high energy. Frequency tinggi dan tenaga yang tinggi. Some students will argue with me saying that, Sir, can I also write because we use ultrasonic frequency because it can go very deep? Also can. You can say, we use ultrasonic kerana dia boleh pergi jauh ke dalam. Also can. But I will advise you to stick to the first two answer, which is high frequency means high energy. Next part of the question will be this. So this is the part where we use the formula. All right. The formula will be, we have to use this, the same thing, V equals to F lambda. You have to use V equals to F lambda. So I'm going to copy the question here. And I'm going to paste it here. So we're going to write V equals to F lambda. So what is your V? 1,500. 1,500? Yes, very good. So they have to give you a speed of sound. So 1,500. Equals to frequency is 6 times 10 to the power of 5, and then the lambda now. So 1500 divided by 6 times 10 to the power of 5. Most of the time, students make mistake when they don't put bracket. So you write that, you type in your calculator, type it as 1500 divided by bracket 6 times 10 to the power of 5. Then you figure out the answer. What's the answer you guys get? Anyone? Someone? I really don't understand, sir. Which part, I don't understand? All of it. Especially this question. This question. So the question, if you see here, Anusha, it shows that what is the frequency in the formula? What is the frequency value? Uh, 6.0 times 10.5 hertz. Correct. So in your formula of V equals to F lambda, just replace the F value with this one, 6 times 10 to the power 5. Can mark. Yes. And then they yes, already yes. give you the speed of the sound wave in seawater. Speed of the sound wave in the kelajuan bunyi dalam air laut, which is your V, kelajuan, speed. So you replace okay. V with 1500. Okay? Okay. Okay, now, and um, then you just, now you already have that algebraic Equation, right? Can you find out what is your lambda? Uh, we'll try to calculate first. Sir. Very good, good, good job, Mark. So therefore, guys, you are supposed to get zero point zero zero two five meter. So the answer is answer is zero point zero zero two five meter. Hey, Bali, Anisha, can Subha, can can sir. Wait a, wait a minute, can I? Okay, now let's do one more question. Okay. Raja satu menunjukkan sistem radar lapangan terbang antarabang sekel. Isyarat dipancarkan oleh sistem radar untuk menentukan kedudukan sebuah kapal terbang. Diagram 5.1 shows the radar system at Kuala Lumpur National Airport, KLIA. Signals are transmitted from the radar system to determine the position of an aeroplane. So they show you, give you a table, one, which shows the characteristic of three radar, system P, Q, and R, which can be used to determine the position of an aeroplane, all right? So you have P, Q, R, and S. So the type of wave that we use is first one is microwave, microwave, radio wave, and radio wave. So they also told us that distance of the signal receiver from the center of the parabolic dish is same as the focal length, less as the focal length, same as the focal length, the other one is less as the focal length. Now the question is, using this information here. So now, what type of wave is transmitted? Apakah jenis gelombang yang dipancarkan? So the gelombang yang dipancarkan for this is most of the time is gelombang micro, right there, micro wave. The reason why we use microwave because it has frequency yang tinggi, because it has high frequency. 
Simba, why we use high frequency? What is what has high frequency got to do with anything? Um high frequency means high frequency has higher energy. Yes, perfect answer. So high frequency has higher energy, correct. So you're right there, we use Glombang micro or microwave. And then the reason why, because it has high frequency and high energy. Next part of the question, it says the distance from the signal receiver from the center of the parabolic dish. So what should it be? So that one, it should be same as the focal length. Summer dengan panjang focus. Only then it able to receive that signal. If it's further away, it cannot receive the signal. And somewhere on top of that, you can write there. You write there the same length as the focal length or summer dengan panjang focus. With reason being, all distance signal can converge. Semua isyarat jauh dapat ditumpukan. Okay, what is the meaning of converge? That means can come to gather. So, can you repeat all distance? So, so you can write. Same as the focal length so that all signals can converge to Paya Sumwa Isharat. Dapat di Can? It means like D focus can. So it's specific. Bully ladies? Can, sir. Anushi, okay, Bully? Can, sir. Okay, next part of the question they say. Based on the answer in AD, choose the most suitable radar system in determining the position of the aeroplane. So, which one is the best? Which one do you think it is? P. Yeah, P. Because P is a microwave and has the same as the focal length. Very good. And then another question that usually comes out in exam is also this diagram where they use ultrasonic sound to determine the the location of the fish using a radar system. So diagram 5.2 shows how a sonar system is used to detect a school of fish in the deep sea water. This technique is used, it uses ultrasonic. So name the wave phenomenon shown in diagram 5.2. So the name phenomenon dipangil sebagai reflection. Why we use reflection? So if we can see the waves are focused on them and then the wave touches their body and bounces back. Gelombang ini ditumpukan kepada ikan. Lepas gelombang ini kena pada permukaan ikan, dia akan dipantulkan balik. That's why here your answer is reflection of pantulan. Ten ladies? Yes, sir. Okay, this is another calculation where it requires you to know one formula. Okay, the formula is very, very simple is S equals to Vt over 2. Okay, the formula is copy and paste it. So the formula is S, which displacement is equals to Vt over 2. This is Sarsaran displacement, velocity, this is time, this is 2. Why you have to divide by 2, sir? Because the time taken for the sound to go and come back is two times the time, correct? So to prevent, we are using two times the time. That's why we bagi doer, so the time can be half. Like it takes three seconds for the sound to reach and three seconds to reflect back to our sonar system. So if we don't want to use two times the time, that's why we divide by two. Make sense or not? Ladies, can understand? Can. So this is the formula we use, S equals to V, T over 2. 
we come out in exam. So this is your V, this is your T, and the question wants you to find the S. So I'm going to replace it with the formula. S is equal to V is 1500. So times with time, which is 200 milliseconds. And then divided by 2. So I repeat again, 1,500. What is the meaning of milli? You also remember? Mm -hmm. Milli means times 10 to power negative 3. Then divided by 2. Because you have to change it to meter, correct? Yes. Right? Punching this in the calculator, see what you all get. So here's the formula we get. 1,150 uh, meter. Okay, so we will stop here today and then we'll continue in the next class. So make sure you all join tomorrow at my session, uh, which is at 4 o'clock. Um, I will let you know what are the chapter maybe by tonight. Holy guys. Holy sir. Okay, ladies, thank you so much. And I will see your. Oh, I'm not sure that's the Uh Yes, sir, I think so. Okay, well.